So, you are obviously here because you have questions or concerns about the Marine Corps Platoon Leaders class. Um, basically, this whole video is going to be a very general introduction to what the PLC is, um, how you go about the application process, um, and just kind of lining out um, how the whole thing works. And so you can kind of decide for yourself whether or not this is something that you want to do. Um, like I said, it's going to be very, very general information because, you know, I'm just starting uh, making some videos. When I was going through the application process myself, there really wasn't a whole lot of stuff out there. And so I had to figure pretty much everything out on my own. I found a few YouTube videos here and there, and those were the most helpful for me. So that's kind of why I wanted to start this series. Um, if I get good feedback from you guys on this video, uh, I'll keep making more and I'll try to be more specific to any questions that you guys have. So um, we can go ahead and get started with talking about what the PLC is and um, its relation to the other commissioning programs that the Marine Corps has. So first of all, the Marine Corps gets its officers through three different programs. Uh, one of them, the most common, is Naval ROTC. Because the Marine Corps is a department of the Navy, they do not have their own ROTC program, and so they kind of piggyback off of the Navy with it. You go to a you know accredited university that has a Naval ROTC and apply for that scholarship. If you get in, then uh, you know you'll be a midshipman and do all the things that they got to do. You know they got to like work out in the mornings they got PT certain times uh, you know they get all their camis and you know uniform stuff everything that they need they almost kind of treat them like they're active duty service members or, or really more like reservists but uh, so they gotta you know wear their hair and code uh, me being a PLC candidate I can have my beautiful long luscious hair just like this and I don't have to go to PT you know, every morning at seven o'clock. So also Naval ROTC midshipmen, they have specific classes that they have to take. And um, they, they usually really only allow certain majors, a lot of engineering majors or, you know, like stuff to do with aviation. Um, me being a PLC candidate, I'm a forestry major and they apparently don't have any problem with that. So those are the kind of two different things there. So there's PLC, Naval ROTC, and then there's OCC. Now OCC is basically, <coughs> excuse me. OCC is for people who have already graduated college or are seniors in college, juniors or seniors, I think, in college. So um, it's very, very similar to the PLC, but uh, it's mainly for those guys who don't have the time to take those two summers and do two six week sessions, which I'll get into that in a minute too. So you have those three different commissioning programs, PLC, Naval ROTC, and OCC. PLC, it's great for people like me. Uh, obviously, I like my long hair. Um, you don't have PT, seven o'clock every morning. You know, it's, it's a whole lot more loose and very fluid there's not a whole lot of obligations that you have after you've been selected to go to OCS that's what I really like about it uh, I can major in whatever the heck I want to and um, when you go to your field exercises you'll be with the midshipmen and you'll kind of you'll kind of get a look into what experience that they have really uh, you know we're all going to end up in the same place so it really doesn't matter how you go about it but anyways, this video is supposed to be more specific to PLC, Platoon Leaders Class. It's for freshmen in college, sophomores in college, and I do believe juniors can apply too. I'm a freshman in college, so um, how I got started. I got started going to the local recruiting office. I was thinking about enlisting at first, long story short. Uh, my mom talked me out of it and she got this little handbook that had the PLC mentioned in there. And I was like, nah, there's, there's no freaking way I'm gonna do that. Like, 
I want to I want to go ahead and get into it now. I want to already be doing stuff right now. And so when I read into the platoon leaders course a little bit and found out that I can be going to college and have no obligations throughout the year, but during the summer I can go ahead and start getting in that military experience that I I really wanted. I was just super eager to go ahead and get started with it. I didn't want to get a late jump. So when I found out that you go uh as a PLC junior, so there's PLC senior and PLC junior. Juniors go two six-week sessions uh, the first summer after their freshman year, and then they go through their entire sophomore year, and that summer they don't do anything. But after their junior year, uh, they'll go for another six weeks. So they'll have a total of 12 weeks of officer candidate school. Um, OCC applicants or yeah, OCC applicants, uh, they go for a combined 10-week session. So after your, back to PLC juniors, your first six weeks is PLC juniors. Your second six weeks is PLC senior. All right, so that's kind of how that whole thing works with junior, seniors, and OCC. But um, yeah, so I went down to my local recruiting office and... Uh, I was thinking about enlisting, you know, he was all for it, you know, go ahead, sign up now, you're 17, get in that delayed entry program, and uh, anyways, when my mom found out the, about the PLC, I started, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, I've been pretty sick lately, but I started looking into uh, how I could apply for the PLC, and what it really was, when I decided that's something I wanted to get into, I went back to my local recruiter, I asked him for the contact information of my officer selection officer. And so you can go to your local recruiter and ask him for that information, or you can go onto the Marine Corps website. And I'm not exactly sure, I can't remember exactly how, but uh, somewhere on the Marine Corps website, you can find and get in touch with your OSO that's uh, over your region. So you can get their phone number, give them a call and just be like, hey, this is uh, Colton Wilkerson, uh, blah, 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 and I want to look into the PLC. And he'll start getting you on track for it. So basically what happens after that is they'll ask you uh, a series of questions to see whether or not you're just going to go ahead and get knocked out from the military altogether. Do you have any felonies, um, any serious injuries, all that kind of stuff that can just go ahead and knock you out from even enlisting into the military. If you do have any significant injuries or felony charges or anything like that that could potentially knock you out, um, you can apply for a waiver, but uh, it is kind of difficult to get, but you can do it. So if they ask you those questions and they're, they'll be like, sorry, man, you can't get into it, keep bugging them about it because there are ways around it. But anyway, so I'll ask you a series of questions and... Um, then if you get far enough into it, they will email you what's called the rough application. And it is like a 70 page long packet of just pretty much everything about yourself. From the time you were born, from right at this moment, that's gonna be put down in that packet basically. Every significant moment is gonna be put down in that packet. So you'll fill that whole thing out. It's medical stuff it's what you've done in high school um, extracurricular activities and you know volunteer work all that kind of stuff uh, what kind of grades did you have it's gonna be it, it'll ask some more personal questions you have to write uh, like a 100 word synopsis about your life you'll have to write a little essay about why you want to be a marine and all that kind of stuff all this really long uh, very 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 detailed crap honestly and so you'll fill out that rough application and then you'll give that uh, back to your you'll probably be talking mostly with your officer selection officer assistant uh, you're really not going to be in contact with your actual OSO until a little later on in the application process but after you fill out the rough application what you kind of need to go ahead and have in your mind there are three different contracts that you can fill out through PLC. And that is a ground contract, which is, you know, what 
most people would think of as a marine uh, any MOS that's going to be on the ground then there's a aviation contract or an air contract and then a law contract so the law contract I believe that you do have to go to law school later on but um, there's really not a whole lot of people that apply for that that I know of so and I honestly don't know anything about the law contract personally I just signed an air contract so I'm gonna go in to be a pilot hopefully but uh, that's another great thing about the PLC is that as a freshman in college they can guarantee that you will receive flight training upon completion of officer candidate school graduating college making it through TBS which is the basic school that's what you go to if you graduate OCS so if you're able to do all those things they guarantee that you will receive flight training which most other branches will not guarantee that to you until you know you're like a senior in college which is quite a bit later on and if you're like me you want to go ahead and get a jump on things and you know kind of secure a career path already <coughs> then uh plc is great for you um naval ROTC, you can't do that because it's through the navy they have their own way of doing things and so all that gets a little bit complicated but anyways plc uh three different contracts so you finish the rough application pick out what contract you want and keep talking with your oso after you finish the rough ap rough application what you're gonna do pick the contract you want they'll send you to meps they will then send you to uh, get a PFT done. They'll either have a local recruiter do it for you or you'll have to go down there to the officer selection team and run one down there, wherever it is. And uh, that'll be, try and get as many PFTs in as you can because what they really wanna see is progress. And so you'll try and run several PFTs. Honestly, I, I think I only got one PFT in, but it was a pretty good score to start off with. It was like a two, 269, I think. And um, if you guys are more interested in the PLC, then you, know, you can ask me questions in the comments uh, more specific to you know, like what's a good PFT score, blah, blah, blah. But right now I'm just kind of, like I said, outlining a very, very generally informative video about the PLC. So after you go to MEPS, after you finish your rough application, uh, get a PFT in, they will then put together a packet specifically for you that they send off to a board whenever the board comes around. There's a spring board, a fall board, and a winter board. I think that's it. I think there's only three boards per year. And so you'll have to wait until that board comes up and they will send in your packet there will be uh, a screen in front of all the people there that are selecting officer candidates and your screen will pop up and it'll say you know your your college gpa uh whether or not you took the AS, the astb which i'll get more into that in a more specific aviation related video so it'll have your astb score on there if you took that test uh, which you have to get an air contract It'll have your um, PFT score on there, and you know any DQs that you got from MEPS will also be on there. So they'll look at that. Uh, they'll have, I think, so a couple of the essays that you wrote, and they'll make a decision pretty much based on that amount of information. It is a very minimal amount of information. So if you're looking at doing this, those are the things that you need to focus on the most is physical fitness, uh, college GPA and uh, your ASTB scores that's that's really what helped me get in there's such a shortage of pilots right now that if you can pass the ASTB the, my OSO told me that if you can pass the ASTB and have a decent PFT score you're gonna get in so that's kind of how that whole thing works um, during the time you know after you finish your rough application and go to MEPS and get your PFT score in. After that, the time between then and whenever your board comes up, you need to make sure that you're in 
very constant and consistent com conversation with your officer selection officer or the OSO, whoever you find yourself talking to more often, because that they're gonna, your OSO is gonna go to the board and they're going to give their opinion on whether or not you're gonna be a good candidate. And so if you're, you know, checking in like once a month or once every two months, probably not gonna get it. They're not really gonna think that you're very invested into the whole thing. They're not really going to have any idea uh, of what's going on in your life at that time. So you need to make sure that you're in very constant and consistent contact with your officer selection team. Um, that's really kind of the best general overview of what the PLC is. Uh, like I said, I just got selected. Everything is pretty fresh on my mind. So I would honestly love for you guys to drop comments down, asking questions, um, you know, specific to what you have, because obviously I know there are so many questions out there that I didn't even touch on in this video, but I would really love to start a series <coughs> about the PLC and my, my process through that so I can help all you guys out. Um, that way you're getting a much better idea on how you can increase your chances of getting selected for OCS and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, future things to do after getting selected. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to let me know and I'll answer them as best as I can in another video. But yeah, this 